This is a snowy day in the life of Jennings. Donnie's inside making a lovely breakfast. I am outside getting wood to take to the yurt way down there. I don't know if you can see it. It is right there. I'm crushing its head. <laughs> Anyway, that's where we had it. Of course, the first thing to do is to gather bamboo. Because this is the single best kindling in the world. And I want some pieces to take to the yurt to go along with my other kindling and to store it in a nice looking little bucket here this nice umbrella stand that we got from Goodwill so here we go and the job today is to use this broom this broom to brush the snow off of the yurt so it does not collapse. I could take the car to drive down to the yurt, but by the time I clean off the car, get it warmed up, and get inside, I can walk. But before we go, I want to show you what I did early this morning. I took care of the girls. They will not come outside. They said, no way. This is nice, insulated, warm coop. There's no way we're going outside. So, I gave them new bedding. They got the full bucket of feed, chicken chow. <laughs> A little bucket of water that I'll check on later today and fill again. The watering system is designed for outside, not inside. And they got fresh bedding because they're chickens. Hi, girls. Hey, dear. This is Wilma. Hi, Wilma. And they're all inside because they refuse to come out. And what they didn't know is I put them a nice treat in their bedding so they're scratching and getting all of it. Hi huh, girls? Yeah. We'll see you later. We'll see you later. Right? Well, nope. otherwise they'd pop right out, but they're not coming out. They're smart. Not Canadian chickens. They are not Canadians. So we'll start the trek out to the yurt. As you can see, I'll just do my tempered gear, except for my food. I'm not happy about my winter boots got wet and they're still drying. That's what I spent a lot of time doing this morning is drying my winter boots. So here we go. Down to the boot. I was made for days like this. The lovely snow. This is my season. Look at the snow and the jujubes. You can really see the thorns on the jujube now. I love jujube. And there's the yurt. I just want to pause in some silence.
And here's the best view of the day. The yurt is still standing. That wonderful bamboo pole is doing its job. It's not collapsing like the metal pole that came with it. And uh, it's pretty heavy snow. You can see in the trees that it's pretty heavy. So we'll see the truth of it when we get up to the yurt, but so far it looks good. The stove pipe is still standing. I'm still standing. The tent is still standing. <laughs> We're gonna go brush it off to keep the snow away. Then the plan is to make a nice fire to keep the tent warm so the snow won't stick on the sides. Here we go. First glance, the snow is pretty heavy. So this side back here that's scrunched would normally be standing tall like this side. So it's pretty heavy. I'm glad I came down to get the snow off. And we'll go around and see what it looks like inside first. It's leaning a bit. But we'll go inside. So we discovered, I discovered one of the reasons it's leaning is because that front pull, that one front stake lost its footing and collapsed in. That's what's causing it to lean a bit. And um, I wasn't happy when I left that stake the other day because it's pretty much in mud. But I'm going to pile some stones around it this time make it nice and sturdy then we'll look inside so this snow is so heavy I can't uh, I thought I could just pull and knock the snow off but I know you can't tell how hard I'm tugging but whoop, I'm tugging pretty hard and I can't even pull it up to stake it. So I'm gonna knock some of the snow off first on this side so I can go ahead and stake. Here we go. Thankfully the snow just comes off in a big avalanche. So I'm gonna try to show you what that looks like while holding the camera. Wish me luck. <laughs> One hand with a broom. We'll see. push it off, it just comes down, thankfully. both hands to get the rest and that pulls up a whole lot easier. I'll be right back. So here's my solution. Put the stake in, put a nice piece of concrete right in front of it. That's what this is here. And then I use the mud. It's like mortar. You kick the mud all around the stone. Stepped around on the stone quite a bit, so I don't think that's going to pull out. Well, it might. But at least it's a temporary fix for now. i step on it. I think that'll hold it. I'll find some more stones. And now, let's go inside after I clean my boot.
I think my boot is cleaner than it was before I started. <laughs> We're pretty clean. Except maybe the bottom. Yeah, that's better. Best thing about snow, you always have water around. Yay! So here's the big reveal. Let's see what things look like inside. It's not too bad. A little slurp, sloping. Macrame is intact. Quite a bit of sloping. It's dry. We'll start a fire and start to knock off the extra snow. Yay! <laughs> Here's the plan. This stuff goes in there, combusts, starts the fan, goes through the stovepipe. That's the plan. A little bit of leaking around the flashing. Not too bad. That'll burn right off. Not a problem. Somebody's got to put that stuff in there. I guess that somebody is me. <laughs> so I'll do that. And we'll see how it goes. Then I'll knock snow off. Some of the best kindling in the world is a toilet paper roll rolled up inside of another toilet paper roll. You only need about four of them to get things going. And um, it's a lot better than having those pieces of newspaper with the pictures and all the color and the dye and the ink and looking at ads all the time. They actually look pretty cool sitting with the rest of the wood. <laughs> Can't fight fashion. <laughs> And instantly, it's full. <laughs> so, you make sure that the flue is open, which is very important. And you can get the fire started. Check back in a short while. It doesn't take long to get this going, really. It's a nice draft on it. Got the opening here to let the oxygen in. So, knocked quite a bit of snow off. It's kind of hard to see orient where you are. So, you can see on this side where I've knocked snow off, on this side where I have not. And I'm using a nice soft tube so I don't poke a hole in the tent. Very important. <laughs> So one thing I noticed is that my nice tall bamboo pole is a little bent under the pressure because it's still green, you know. I don't blame the pole. But um, as I'm knocking snow off, it's straightening up a bit. So we'll see. Hopefully knocking the snow off 
will be enough. We'll see. And the fire's going nice and warm. Roaring, in fact. I could probably close the flue a bit. So let's close the flue. Mm, very, very warm. Very warm. And you can already see where the snow is starting to lift. <laughs> and then, voila, the fan started. That was a bonus. Can you tell I like winter? I love winter. What's more beautiful than that? <laughs> One happy camper. Yay. One happy meditator. This is going to be great. Meditating in the cold with a fire roaring and snow all around inside this lovely space okay now back to work so fire's going bamboo poles holding maybe some of the pressure came off the bamboo pole it's hard to tell I think some did. From the front, it still looks nice and straight. And the wonderful thing is, with just that little fire so far, and the wonderful efficient echo fan, We're up to 37 degrees. And it feels warm in here. You can tell it's warmer in here. And that's with the door wide open. Well, half wide open. So I would say it's success. It's doing all right. I'm gonna keep working. Now I'm gonna go outside and make sure the um, stakes are pulled up. You can see here where it's a little sag. So we'll check the stakes, make sure everything is okay. Reset the front stake. So the best news is this stovepipe is solid. It stayed even though the tent bowed a bit. Um, it stayed nice and solid. I moved one of the guide wires the other day, the guide wire um did come down in this direction and it just wasn't enough of a create not enough of a fulcrum to um keep the stovepipe up so what i did instead is i ran it as you can see it came all the way down and i actually staked it to the loop for the tent guide wire. And it was just enough to give it more balance. I don't know if you can see now the three, one, two, and three guide wires. It's kind of hard to see. But here's one, there's two behind the stovepipe, and there's three. So the stovepipe is solid. Thanks to Donnie for doing that. I sure couldn't do it. I'm a guide wire queen. Guide wire queen, but stovepipes, that's not my thing. I'm learning though. <laughs> so more snow to move from around the bottom of the tent from where I knocked it off. 
and you could tell already that the snow is melting. Look at that. The snow is melting. Altering its form. It's changing into water. My flashing fell apart, but that's okay because it's still dry inside. And we'll fix that on a nicer day. So, snow's knocked off. Um, if you can see, the tent is still a little bit saggy. Um, I'm not going to try to tighten that too much right now. We'll tighten it more for stability. And um, because this is a cotton tent, I want to wait before tightening it too much. But what I've noticed, and I've taken this stake, even though the stake stayed in place, the guide wires held, some of these actually bent in the ground with the weight of the snow. That's just how heavy the snow is. I don't know if you can see that bend there, but it's pretty, pretty bent. So I knew all along that we were gonna have to get better stakes, but uh, here's proof. <laughs> So I am mean, going to pull this one a little bit tighter because as you can see, it just helps it to stand up a little bit better and it might even help our pull, our uh, lodge pull. You can see the snow is melting as soon as it hits the tent. No. Which is great. That's what we want even here in the doorway where it would be the coolest it's still melting as it hits stove pipes good inside is good and dry and lovely oh my goodness I just want to stay in here all the time You know, Donnie and I live a pretty, uh, you'd almost call it a monastic life. We do our work, we do meditative work, we enjoy it. And um, we like tending this land that we've been blessed to be a part of. Originally Monacan land, then farmed by enslaved people after the colonizers came and we get to be here in this space using what we have this rug is a buffalo hide that was given to me by a patient years ago lovely person.
So here's the good news. The pole is almost as straight as it was when I first put it up. Actually, pretty much back to normal. It tells you the power of snow, the weight of it. They had a little bow in it before, but it's nowhere near where it was bowing before with all the snow on it. And, um, you know, because this was leaned back and you can actually see the pull through the macrame piece. And I have not moved, touched the pull at all. Just knocked all the snow off, which is now just water. <laughs> oh boy, what a happy day. Thanks for hanging out with me at the yurt and uh, we'll be here again have a great day everyone we love you